did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered would soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy I do a blind man Oh Mary, did you know That your baby boy Would calm a storm with his hands Did you know That your baby boy Has walked where angels tread When you kiss your little baby Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Oh, Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's prayer? Good morning and Merry Christmas. What a blessing it is to have you with us this morning or this evening or whenever it is that you are watching this service. I hope that you and your family have had an amazing morning, an amazing day, and that above all, you are worshiping Jesus Christ, our Savior. Would you bow in prayer with me? God, thank you for this opportunity to be with you, the opportunity to remember Jesus Christ. 
unto us a child is born, the Savior, the Holy One, the Redeemer. God, as we take some time to remember you, to remember the gift that you gave us in Jesus the Christ, help us to worship you. And not just worship you in this moment, but worship you all the time. Worship you as we love you, as we go about our day, as we talk with you about our day. For all of that is worship. God, we thank you for the greatest gift. It is in the the name of your Son, the gift that you gave us, that we pray. Amen. stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul Would you join me in the call to worship? Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. 
and nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Let us pray once again. God, thank you for this opportunity to be with you, be in this place, knowing that this place doesn't have to be the sanctuary. This place is wherever you are. This place is our homes or our loved ones' homes. And the place is our hearts where you reside. In your son's name, amen. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining far through shadows dim, giving the light for those who long have gone, guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of life, guiding the pilgrims through the night. Over the mountains till the break of dawn. Into the land of perfect day it will give out a lovely ray oh beautiful star of Bethlehem shine on oh beautiful star us a lamp to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of grace for the redeemed, the good and the blessed. Yonder in glory is one. Jesus is now the star divine, brighter and brighter he will shine. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star the lamp to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Till the Son of God.
John 3, 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. To me, as I read that, it tells me how much God truly loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that no one needs to be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. It also says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Which means God didn't send the send Jesus down to earth to point fingers, but instead point it in the right direction. So we are continuing our Advent series with the great adventure. The adventure continues. And even though this is the last in the series, the great adventure continues with you. The adventure was created way back. In fact, in the beginning of Scripture, Genesis 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth didn't have any shape, and it was empty. There was darkness over the surface of the waters. At that time, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Do you hear the Spirit of God was there in the very beginning? Christ, the one that we celebrate today, was with God, is God, and was at the very beginning, giving hope from the very beginning. Behold the candle of hope. There was nothing. There was no time. There was no adventure, no light, zero, until God created everything. Nothing except our triune God existed at the time. But God desired more than that. He created the adventure that now we all live. When, the, when he created the world and all within the world, that's when the adventure began. The land your house is sitting on right now, God created that. The people that you are with right now, God created them. You were created by God the unprocessed food that you eat and the water that you drink was created by God. So I want you to pause for a minute and I want you to look outside and I want you to find one thing that God created. My guess is you can find many. Right outside the walls of this church, there's beautiful trees that God created. There's grass that God created. What do you see out your nearest window that God has created? He created that for part of your adventure. The adventure that is your life with God. We were given the blessing of God's creation Look at who you're with right now. Turn to the person that is next to you. Or if you are watching this by yourself, think of the one that you love, one that comes to mind. Yeah, God blessed you with that person or people. They are a blessing directly from God for you. The adventure that was given from Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. Here are the words of our Lord. In those days, Caesar Augustus made a law. It required that a list be made of everyone in the whole Roman world. It was the first time a list was made of the people while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to their own town to be listed, and so Joseph went there also. He went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea. That is where Bethlehem, the town of David, was. Joseph went there because he belonged to the family line of David. He went there with Mary to be listed, and Mary was engaged to him. She was expecting a baby, and while Joseph and Mary were there, the time came for the child to be born. 
She gave birth to her first baby, and it was a boy. She wrapped him in large strips of cloth, and then she placed him in a manger. That's because there was no guest room where they could stay. God gave us this great adventure when he gave us Jesus. Jesus is the greatest gift that we could ever ask for or possibly imagine. What an amazing joy for Joseph and Mary. What an amazing journey that they had. And the journey was just starting for them. What exceptional faith they had in God. May we learn how to have such great faith. And what amazing love they had as parents. May we learn how to love just as strongly as they did. Love the Lord with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, with all of our might. Behold the candle of love. We've spent some time with talking about John 3.16. You heard a testimony about John 3.16, and you're going to hear another one pretty soon. This is the perfect gift of love, John 3.16. But I want to pause for a second, and I want you to think. When we talk about the perfect gift, maybe where your mind goes is, What is the worst gift you have ever been given in the history of your Christmas presents? I don't know about you, but I've had some that haven't been all that great, but I love them, and I love the people that give them. What is the best gift that you've ever been given in the history of Christmas presents? And has have you ever... Has anyone you've ever known received the perfect gift for Christmas? And in fact, do you remember the gifts that you got last year? Do you still hold on to that gift and say, that is the perfect gift, the gift that I've always wanted? I never want another Christmas gift because that one is perfect. Or are we always wanting more? The perfect gift the gift that never leaves us wanting more, and the one we always remember is the gift that came from God, Jesus the Christ. What John 3.16 means to me, uh, John 3.16 is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will go to heaven and not perish. Um, So what that means to me is God is love. God is forgiveness. Uh, We believe in God and we uh, ask for forgiveness when we sin. And then we get to live the rest of our lives in heaven with um, God. And um, what we can do on a daily basis to do this is love everybody. And if somebody asks for forgiveness, forgive them. That's what God does for us. All we have to do is ask. And that's what John 3.16 means to me. Jesus is the one and true gift that brings us 120% joy. Jesus is the gift like no other. We don't get joy from the gifts that you've already opened or will be opening. We don't get joy, and I mean true, pure joy that lasts a lifetime. We don't get that joy from a gift that was opened today or last night or the gifts to come for this year, or we don't get pure joy from the gifts from last year or any other year. Even the gift that you remember from years past will not bring you the joy that Jesus brings. Behold the gift and the candle of joy. And the adventure lives on with John 3, 16 through 17. Scripture says, 
God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world. He sent his son to save the world through him. In a few short months, we will be giving thanks for the sacrifice of the babe that we're now celebrating. The blessing of the birth of Christ today becomes the sacrifice that we need for our hope and our joy and our peace in our eternal future. Behold the candle of peace. And while calendar months are in between the beginning for the birth of Christ and the earthly end in a few months, there's this lifetime for us to explore in Scripture. Scripture gives us everything that we need to make sure that the great adventure lives into eternity for us and for others. God's gift of salvation and the news of salvation lives on in us. The wonder of the love of Christ lives on for us, and it must be passed on to others. Just as we've heard testimonies today about who Christ is and the gift of his birth, it only takes just a few short minutes with those that you have a relationship with to pass on the gift of your testimony. So can you do that today? As the gift you have been given in Jesus the Christ, pass on the gift to others. In fact, you might even want to pass this recording on as a gift to others. We want to pass on Christ as often as we can. Christ is the one that brings us the hope. Christ is the one that brings us the faith. Christ is the one that brings us the joy. Christ is the one that brings us the love. Behold the candle of Christ. And now, like we did yesterday, if you were in the service, I know that you're at home and you don't really have a Christ candle, but how can you take that light into the world. On this day, let your light shine, the gift that God has given you, the gift of love that Jesus gives you. On this day, may you share the gift of God's wonder the gift of the great adventure, and may you share it for the rest of 2022 and share it into the new year and beyond. Merry Christmas.